Hello from Palo Alto. My name is Rachel Torres and I'm excited to be talking to the fashion magazine's class at Lim College about how you can use digital publishing for your fashion magazine and how you can use issue for that. So a little bit about myself. I do our product marketing here at issue. I've been here about a year and a half. I've spent my career in consumer tech marketing and product management. Um, including digital marketing and um, I started my career as I mentioned as a web consumer product manager. So my role at Issue, just for some context, it's not quite the fashion editorial world but the fashion editorial world uh, is one of our biggest customers. Um, so for product marketing at a tech company it's really about understanding your customers really well, doing qualitative research, meeting people like yourselves, um, understanding the product really well and making sure that the product meets your customers needs. It's about understanding the outside environment in which your customers use or may not use your product. So knowing what competitors are doing or knowing what kind of market changes such as uh, the rise of mobile devices um, would affect how people use your product. And then really thinking about how do you say the right thing in the right way at the right time on the right channel to the right people. And that's really about refining your messaging and positioning and the strategies for what kind of marketing tactics you're doing, whether it's doing a big billboard or doing ads online or doing community events um, and how you, what you're kind of saying to your um, customers and potential customers. And then a big part of it is empowering evangelists. So finding the people, um, hopefully you guys will become our evangelists um, for issue, but finding the people who really get the most out of your product and can um, talk to uh, other people about your product and have really great word of mouth marketing and um, making sure that those people have the love and support that they need from your company to go out and do that. But that's enough about me. I'm really here to talk to you about digital publishing and how Issue can fit into that for you. So Issue is the world's largest digital publishing and discovery platform. Um, our goal is to connect people with content they love that's meaningful content. Um, you know, we have um, a lot of great stats that I think reflect the reach and breadth and utility of um, what our platform has been able to provide to both publishers and readers. So we have more than 3 million publishers um, every day. They're uploading more than 20,000 uh, pub new publications. That's every day. And we have more than 30 million total publications on the site. Um, and all those publishers contribute uh, content that is seen by 100 million people on our sites, uh, on our site, on our Android and iOS apps. Um, publications that are embedded in other sites as well. That's more than 100 million every month. And that contributes to 5 billion monthly page views. So even if your publication um, is one piece of that puzzle in a small way or a big way, it's part of a very, very large ecosystem of people who are creating amazing content and sharing it with the world all over the world. Um, so... This is a little snapshot of our product, which um, I hope you guys will go to issue.com and check it out as well. And I think you'll be using it for your final projects as well. Um, so some things to know about issue uh, as a publisher, it is free uh, to get started. You can publish magazines, newspapers, catalogs, portfolios, lookbooks, um, guides, um, craft templates, recipes, pretty much anything that you can create as a PDF or um, Word document or other kind of similar file types you can upload. And it's really fast and it's really easy to do that. It takes just a few seconds um, to get started. Um, you know, we really make sure that no matter what device you're on, whether you're on your phone or a tablet um, or a you know huge iMac screen, that issue will work well um, and look great. So that really helps people get their publications out there because they don't have to do any special coding to make sure that you know their magazine can be used on uh, you know a small you know four by two inch screen. And as I mentioned before. 
these publications live both on Issue on our website, issue.com, or in our native apps uh, for Android and iOS. But also, you know, you can embed your, pu your issue publication on your own website or blog and in social media channels. And I'll show you what that looks like a little bit later. So that is all free to get started. You know, we make our money um, by offering um, display advertising. We partner with brands to sponsor content. Um, and of course, we also have paid publishing features. So as a reader, it's pretty much always free. We do have some things in the works to provide um, the ability to purchase issue content, but essentially where we get a lot of our revenue from is from publishers who love our service and need more advanced features, and so they upgrade to our paid plans. So we have paid plans, we have, um, you know, premium, which is a little bit cheaper. We have optimum, which gets you everything, but just kind of in general, what these features provide. Um, we have a suite of features called Issue Collaborate that are really for remote teams who are producing publications. So you can do your flat planning, you can coordinate with ad sales, it integrates with InDesign, so you can assign um, pages that are still left to be worked on to either designers or writers. Um, so it's one-stop shop instead of kind of messing with a bunch of emails and messages and Slack and Dropbox and um, Google Sheets, like you can kind of do that all in one place um, with Issue Collaborate and you get access to that um, with our paid plans. You know, maybe you are really smart and you're working ahead of time and you can schedule public releases so that you don't have to be, um, you know, awake at 5 a.m. on a Saturday to press publish on your latest issue. Um, that's a great paid feature. We also allow, you know, if you are, you know, growing your brand, it's going to be really important to you that the look and feel of your publication and how it's presented and within the issue uh, context matches your brand. So, you know, for embeds, for example, you can add a logo or change the background color so that it really matches the look and feel of your site, which adds a lot of high quality polish as you're building your brand. And there's also um, an ad-free, distraction-free, um, no other suggested publications thing that we call custom full page reader and I'll show you later how to get to that um, and that is kind of our ad-free version that you can also link people to, to instead of linking them to your issue profile or issue uh, publication page on issue.com and that is a paid feature. Uh, and then also, you know, as you're building your business, you um, get full access to your statistics history. At the free level, you only get about 30 days. Um, and at the paid level, you get full access. And what that allows you to do is get the proof points you need to build your media kit if you're going out and getting advertisers. But it also allows you to see what content your readers are enjoying the most and helps you shape your editorial plans around that. So you have statistics even if it's free, but you get a little bit more in-depth um, uh, timeline access when you are a paid publisher. So all that is great for publishing. Um, one of the biggest things our publishers do is get inspiration. Um, and that is still, as I mentioned, free. And even if you're not going to publish in the future, um, I hope you'll you know, download our issue app um, and bookmark it in your browser. And you can discover content on pretty much any topic imaginable, um, design, food and drink, um, feminism, um, quilting, recipes, um, you know, we have 30, or excuse me, 3 million amazing creators. These are people who are really passionate about sharing, um, their storytelling with the world. Um, and that is, you know, one of the things that other publishers love to do is just see what other people are doing on issue. So specifically thinking about fashion on issue, first I wanted to share this video um, about one of our fashion publishers. And Questions I in disguise Your eyes That's all your words can say My name is Nicole Gavrilis. I am the CEO, founder, and creative director of One Magazine. 
a fashion editorial magazine that's focused on pushing the limits of fashion photography and showcasing fashion photographers and designers. In 2010, I started one magazine. It was more of a side project. I was inspired by a lot of kids at my school that were older than me that were just making really cool things. And I'm like, well, I can do this. I can make cool portfolio work. I had illustration majors like make work for me or submit work to me. Or I just had some of my friends submit their photography work and it kind of started from there. And then when I was here in New York, I was like, well, I guess I can make this more legit. I can just contact people and just reach out and that's kind of how it started. When you're in college, you just try things that you like and things that you see and then you think from there, but when you get older and you learn more about your personal style and pushing the limit of design, things just flourish. So I think like it's gradually changing just like my style from year to year. I have people in London, Paris, Milan, LA, Australia, China, just they're everywhere and it's awesome. It's just, it's cool just to see even their interpretation of fashion photography. They have like these beautiful locations that they get to shoot and then it's just seeing um, fashion in a completely different way. I like to work with photographers or designers where people don't really know much about them just yet. And I give them that little spotlight and then they've just like gone crazy and doing great campaigns for Alexander Wang and what have you. So it's it's been amazing to watch. So I want to continue that. I want to continue that relationship, but I also want to work with just really inspiring photographers and designers that I look up to as well. I don't think I'd be anywhere without digital publishing at all. Issue has been with me since the beginning. I love looking at the analytics and seeing actually like where people are reading it. Publishing on the website, publishing on social media has impacted one so much. Just the following, people finding out about the magazine, it's crazy. I don't think I would be anywhere without it. Just having the magazine just be access anywhere globally for our readers and contributors. I think it's exciting to these people because it's also inspiring them to maybe want to submit or maybe like, oh, I love fashion. Maybe this is something I want to go into. So I hope the magazine is becoming this inspirational hub for the digital platform. So that is Nicole, one of our publishers from One Magazine, and I think she touched on um, a lot of things that I want to share with you guys as well. So fashion is definitely uh, one of our biggest categories on issue, um, along with uh, arts and design and sports, um, and as well as automotive. Um, and I think what's unique about it is people like Nicole, people like um, Olivia and Megan from Atlas that I think you're going to be talking to in your class, actually, um, if you have not already. Uh, I think, you know, these are people who just get started. And, you know, the thing about issue, the thing about the kind of, you know, social media channels that are free to use and creating a beautiful website on Squarespace, for example, like the tools to create beautiful content um, are now available um, for either free or very, very cheap for everybody now. And um, it really has unlocked barriers for people to just start doing what they're passionate about and sharing that work with the world. Um, so, uh, you know, publishers like One, like Atlas, like Local Wolves or Half Stack or Nude or Mad Sounds, these are all people you can find on um, on the website. I'll send some links uh, your way through Julia. Um, we also have our generators program um, that, you know, is a camp we had for some of these creators. We also have our trend spotters program um, that some of these publishers are, are highlighting the publishers they love to get inspiration from on issue. Um, and I think, 
you know, for fashion especially, it's, you know, a really great way, as Nicole mentioned, to find people who are up and coming creatives um, and give them a spotlight. And, you know, with Issue, because a big part of the platform is not just putting your uh, digital PDF up, up on the site and it looks nice, it's really about the discovery of similar content as well. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Um, so, you know, I hope this is all very inspiring. Um, when you think about uh, digital publishing on issue, or even if, you know, it was another less or not as good platform, um, I think some of the things you want to think about are making your content really engaging. Um, you can do that with links. Making your content available, um, not just on issue, but uh, on your own site as well. Um, using um, the analytics to look at how you can optimize either for more readers or for advertisers. And then also making sure that you are spreading the word um, about your magazine as uh, widely as possible on social media. And honestly, I think, you know, I'm going to show you a bunch of stuff, but really the first step to starting is to start. Um, and again, it should be pretty easy to get a uh, started with issues. So um, hopefully, you know, having a beautiful place to present your work is not what's holding you back from uh, starting your own, uh, your own publication. So to show you some of these features that I just mentioned, um, oh, this is our issue generators page. I'll send this link as, um, along as well. Um, and these are some of the great uh, publishers that um, are, you know, they're young, they're not that different from um, who I imagine is taking this class. Um, and they are just out there starting great new publications. That's our generators camp. Um, so thinking about links, here's an example. This is Concrete Wave. Um, we have a bug on our site, I guess. Um, I'll show you how to do the links, um, but it's not just doing a link um, to something to buy, but also you can put in video and it'll pop up in a pretty seamless way. Um, so if you're doing behind the scenes shoots, for example, um, you can uh, create space, design space in your publication for that um, and then put uh, the link on top of that uh, for video. You can also do shopping links. So basically what this is, is you can just say any links, say call it a shopping link, and it'll put this great shopping cart icon so that as people are reading, they know it's shoppable. And that's something you can do for advertisers. Um, one thing people do to earn revenue is to use affiliate marketing um, like ShopStyle. And so you can put ShopStyle links around the products you're featuring um, and use our shopping cart function to make those links look, um, the design of those links be extra inviting for people. Um, so what that looks like is once you are in issue, you will have your publisher homepage. And you can see my very amazing uh, uh, test publication about my dog. Um, but you can go to your publication list and then the publication that you want to add links to, you'll click on links. And you can select the page you want. And then you can, I already have a link here. Um, and you can just kind of click and drag and create links. Um, and you can make it go wherever you want. You can even have internal links uh, that help you uh, navigate the navigate your publication. Um, and if you want to do video, just putting in YouTube or, or Vimeo will automatically detect that and uh, open it up. So it only supports YouTube and Vimeo, but um, since those are the most popular uh, video websites, it should be pretty helpful. Um, I'll make that a shopping link, and so you can kind of preview it. The other thing you can do is if you are creating um, a PDF from InDesign or even from Google Slides, you can add links there. So if you're you know, putting in an image, you can add the link there and it will automatically um, be featured in your site, in your publication on issue. You don't have to come to this creator to get it to work. It will automatically work. But let's say you added a bunch of links and you wanted them to be shopping links. You can use convert links and you can um, say on this page, I want to convert all of these to shopping links. Um, 
and it'll automatically add that icon or you know vice versa so that is the link function um, the other thing I wanted to talk about um, was statistics so you know this is just a test publication that I've not really ever tried to share with anyone but my mom so you know getting 140 reads and 2,000 impressions um, is pretty impressive for doing no work but uploading it um, and so you know hopefully you will have a lot more um, when you look at your lifetime, um, you'll be able to see kind of the patterns for reads, read time, average time spent. We show you out of all your content what's doing the best. Um, and then this is where you can kind of um, use these numbers, these numbers as well as um, these numbers to build a media kit uh, to take to advertisers. And we've had people just straight up screenshot this and that's what they provide to their advertisers as part of their media kit. Um, this is also really great for you to understand your audience better is knowing what kind of device they're using and where they're coming to, um, whether they're discovering it within issue.com or going straight to issue.com, maybe from a link, or it's on an embed on another site or social channel. And then also seeing where your readers are around the world. So, for example, you know, if you saw a bunch of people in Germany, or one person in Germany, you would be able to say, hey, maybe I should recruit um, more German freelancers or creatives to take part uh, in my publication or feature a German model or a German writer. Um, and that's something you can do to kind of build that audience. So that's our statistics. Um, embeds, as I mentioned, I'll show you where to do that. Again, you'd go to your publication list and click uh, embed and you'll be able to um, build an embed and see preview it of what it'll look like. One thing I recommend is clicking this responsive width checkbox and that will make the width 100% um, and that means it will work pretty seamlessly on mobile devices if it's on your site. Um, so you can kind of play around with it. It'll export a code. You just kind of save it and you get your code. And you'll see in the code, if you ever needed to kind of mess with it, you can kind of copy and paste this. And where it says that width, you can mess with that and make sure that's a percentage to make sure um, it will kind of take up the right size container no matter what the device uh, screen size is. And if you wanted that custom full page reader link, you would go here and copy and paste this link. And that is going to go to a version that I think I have free. So I don't know if this will work. Um, oh, right. So now I guess I am paid on this uh, account. So you get a copy like this. Um, whereas otherwise, what it normally looks like on your site is something like this. So when we talk about discovery, you know, sometimes people can be like, oh, it's so small, but we found in our testing that people have a really easy time making the publication full screen and um, reading it that way. And what's great is that, you know, when we show this kind of stuff next to you, um, you might be discovered if someone else is reading similar content to you, you might be discovered in this read more. We also have similar content, popular content, and things that are based on your browsing history. So if you ever see anything weird down here, it's probably because of what you were looking at. Um, <laughs> so that is our embeds and, and our custom full page reader link. This is an example of what an embed looks like. Um, this is our publisher, Sweet Paul, who's one of our top publishers. They're really amazing, kind of the anti-Martha Stewart. Um, and they have a lot of shopping links, for example, and it's embedded on their site. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to talk to you about was sharing. So here's um, the same publisher as I showed the video links for Concrete Wave. They're a really cool skate magazine. Um, and you can just straight up, you know, when you link in Twitter, for example, you can read it right from Twitter. Um, so when you share on social, it's a great way to get uh, more eyes on your content. Um, as you are um, publishing your content, I recommend making sure that you have a clear title 
um, a intriguing description because that is all information that will help people understand what your content is about and help people find it on search and either in Google or uh, on um, within the issue search here. And then the other thing is making sure your profile. So this, I would say, is a terrible profile. I have kind of a random picture. It's just me. I have a nondescript um, name, and I don't have a website or description. So when you are creating your account, I recommend you put all those pieces that I did not put uh, into your account to make it easy for people to um, find you and understand who you are and what you are about and want to follow you. Um, so that is, uh, you know, when you're thinking about creating a publication, setting it up so that people will find it, setting it up so that you are uh, really refining the content you create um, for your audience, um, issue after issue after issue. Uh, these are all the things that I recommend thinking about is you in terms of marketing and your content strategy for your publication, whether or not you use issue. But you should use issue, I think. Um, so again, going back, the first step to starting is to start. Uh, and I wanted to close off with um, getting you thinking about if you're creating a publication, this is how it is today on issue. It's great for any screen size. It's a really engaging experience. It's easy to discover. Um, but the next step is really thinking about how, for issue as a company, and even for you as a publisher, you know, this is where people spend their time is on their mobile phone or on a tablet. And that's where the discovery uh, really starts. And, you know, when you look at statistics of where people spend their time, you know, think about how you use your own your own phone. You probably have a bunch of apps on there, but you're probably only using, you know, four or five every day and spending 99% of your time within just four or five apps. Um, so for, you know, thinking about, oh, you know, I'd like to have my own app, you know, realistically, people are not going to spend time um, adding another app to their rotation. So it's really about thinking about, what are the shareable parts of your magazine and how do you get that in front of where your audience lives? So when we think of a publication, you know, you can kind of break it down into parts and um, the next step for our product is really making it super easy for you to say, okay, here's a product, here's a quote, here's some audio, and these are all things that are going to be super shareable and surfacing that those surfacing that content into where people spend their time, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, which we should probably have on here, but we don't because we're all really old. Um, and that's the cover of the future, right, is the bits and pieces of content that you're spreading out into the world from your publication to bring them back into your publication. Um, and so hopefully you'll be seeing um, really interesting features coming from Issue in the near future that will help with uh this kind of discovery where it's oriented not around a destination of a single website but around systems of sharing and consuming content. So that is everything. Um, feel free to reach out to me. rt at issue.com is my email. Happy to answer any questions you have about the product um, or if you have any ideas or if you'd like to get more involved with issue, let me know. Um, I am on Twitter at Fancy Milk, um, and I tweet very regularly. I do a lot of retweets, um, and I tweet mostly about politics and tech design and um, if I'm trying to get customer service from an airline. So if you are very interested, feel free to follow me at Fancy Milk, but no worries if you don't want to see my airline tweets. Thank you very much, and best of luck with your